It's Johnny Two Face here, back with another reaction video. This time, we're reacting to the Battle of Hotchkirch, uh, 1758. Frederick the Great's deadly mistake: the Seven Years' War by House of History. Now, if you haven't seen my reaction to the other episodes of this Frederick uh, the Great series, I suggest you check them out before checking this one out. And um, and it's and uh, after a wait, it's um, glad to see the latest episodes come out for me to react to since I am continuing this series about Frederick the Great and um, and the Seven Years' War. And um, the usual disclaimer when I react to anything historical, if I don't show so much what is considered a proper reaction, is probably obvious um, that I don't know much about the subject at hand. And if I do know anything, I'll most likely pause the video to give my input or ask any curious questions which hopefully will be answered in the comments below. So with that being said, the link to the original video will be in the description down below. Please go and subscribe to House of History, another great channel here on YouTube and um and uh without further ado, let's get this up on screen and see what happens in this this episode. It is the early morning, October 15th, oh, 1758. Frederick the Great, King of Prussia, is asleep in his headquarters at Hodewitz. Nearby, sounds of gunfire, cannons and screams pollute the quiet morning. His generals storm in, attempting to get him out of bed. A major Austrian offensive has begun and the Prussian army, deployed in a long, thin line, is at risk of being overrun. Frederick responds in a disgruntled manner. Surely these are just some skirmishes. Panicked, the generals leave the room to organize defense themselves. The Battle of Hochkir had just begun. <laughs> his apathy and underestimation okay. of the enemy would become one of Frederick's. Most Sorry, I missed that. His apathy to organize defense themselves. The Battle of Hochkir had just Hochkir. begun. His okay, that's how it's pronounced. Underestimation of the Hochkir. That's how it's pronounced. Okay. I think I mispronounced that. Enemy would become one of Frederick's mm -hmm. most costly mistakes. He does tend to do that quite a bit. Lords and ladies stood at the forefront of history written. These titles certainly speak to the imagination. Historically, they were reserved for nobility. Well, what if I told you that you could become a lord or mm. lady? Established titles is a company which allows you to buy at least one square foot of dedicated land in Edelston, Scotland. With a unique plot number, you can see the exact location of your land. Based on a historic Scottish custom, landowners are referred to as lairds, Lord 10% off. Feel free to check them out if you're interested. I am forced to do with the skin of the fox that I am unable to do with that of a lion, Frederick the Prussia's Great. Prussia's 1758 campaign wow. of the Seven Years' War had not exactly been going great. The only one making real progress was his brother-in-law, Ferdinand of Brunswick, against mm. the French in the west. Wow. On the eastern front, Frederick abandoned the siege of Olmütz after the disastrous ambush at the Battle of Domstadtel. The subsequent Battle of Zorndorf against the Russians had been exceptionally bloody and savage. Mm. As the Prussians were burying the dead in mass graves, Frederick received alarming news from his brother. A few weeks earlier, when retreating from the siege of Olmütz to intercept the Russians, Frederick stationed his brother Prince Henry in Saxony to prevent an Austrian advance. Firmer's anger at the lack of Austrian support during Zorndorf was the writing on the wall. Wow. There weren't Austrians to augment his army because they were concentrated against Saxony. Mm. In late August, General Loudon's light troops marched into Lower Lusatia. Field Marshal Dorn and the main Austrian army followed by a Gorlitz. Mm. They marched against Prince Henry's positions south of Dresden. The prince commanded 20,000 soldiers at best. Nowhere near enough to hold out against Dawn's 80,000 combined Austrian Imperial forces. Wow. Frederick immediately collected 15,000 soldiers to march west. Luck struck when Firmer's army retreated towards mm. the Baltic coast, okay. freeing more soldiers. General Dona remained nearby Kustrin in case Firmer returned. Mm. Frederick embarked on another long and grueling march to his brother's aid. Dorn learned of Frederick's approach during this march, and he positioned his army at Stolpen, to Dresden's east. 
Mm -hmm. Despite the overwhelming numbers and lack of Prussian reinforcements, Dorn failed to capitalize on his advantage. Despite hard. scorching weather and Zorndorf's aftermath, Frederick's army managed to cover 110 miles, around 180 wow. kilometers, in a <coughs> few days. Yikes. An impressive distance, causing many casualties among the battered Prussians. Yeah. Dorn occupied the hills around Dresden. Elsewhere, the situation heated up as well. The Swedes finally mm. kicked into action. In late oh, September, wow. General Karl Heinrich von Wehlel scored a victory mm. against the Swedes at Tornow and Fehrbellin. For now, the Swedes were kept in check. Frederick's arrival unnerved Dorn. He mm. wanted to fight the Prussians in optimal conditions. Of course. By early October, Dorn marched towards Silesia. Frederick shadowed him. He hoped that if he pushed mm. Dorn, the field marshal would fall back towards Zittau. Instead, a game of cat and mouse developed. For days, Dorn pulled back his army as Frederick grew frustrated, mm. trying to force a battle. Dorn received pressure from Vienna. They criticized his timid, he called it cautious, maneuvering mm. and lack of action. They warned him the French and Russians would withdraw from the alliance if he wow. did not fight. On October 7, Dorn set up camp at Kitlitz. Frederick followed suit. He was confident Dorn wouldn't attack, not in the least thanks to a spy in the Austrian camp feeding him information. Mm. But little did Frederick know this spy was compromised, feeding him exactly what Dawn wanted him to know. Oh, wow. If the Austrians leave us unmolested in this village, they deserve to be hanged. Wow. It is to be hoped they are more afraid of us than the gallows. Hochrich. Sorry, I'm On trying. October 10, Frederick arrived in Hochgear. Hochgear. He spotted Dorn's okay. entire army from an elevated position. Hmm. Dorn commanded around 80,000 yeah. soldiers, whereas Frederick commanded hmm. no more than 36,000. To the north at Reichenbach, Prince Christoph of baden burlak commanded wow. some 16,000 soldiers, facing General Wolf on Redsov's force. Stationed at Weisenberg, he was about four miles detached from the main Prussian army. Despite being heavily outnumbered and the terrain not playing in his favor, Frederick decided to wait for supply reinforcements. Okay. Dorn's reputation as a cautious and slow commander led him to believe he would not dare mm. to attack. He set up his headquarters at Rodewitz. The fact Dorn deployed to the villages east, including on strategically essential elevations, unnerved most of his generals. Except for Frederick himself, Keith repeatedly warned the king, who chose to ignore these warnings. Oh dear. They were surrounded by slight elevations. The most prominent was the Kupritzerberg, facing the Prussian right flank. The Prussian line was stretched thin, spanning four miles in an S shape. Keith commanded the soldiers near Hochkir, four battalions, an artillery battery, and Zieten's cavalry. To the southwest, some light regulars roamed the forest. General Lacy convinced Dorn to exploit his weakness, although Dorn spent three days reconnoitering before deciding to mount a full attack. It was clear Dorn had the strategic high ground and the Prussians were in the dark entirely. Frederick ordered only the usual pickets, allowed to sleep inside and the cavalry to unsettle their horses. Keith and Zieten refused these orders. On the night of October 13, the Austrians kept their campfires burning. By morning, the workmen began felling trees, business as usual, in the Austrian camp. Except the main army departed. The long morning march through difficult terrain went surprisingly smooth. By 3.30 a.m., most of the Austrian army reached their intended positions to attack. Dawn personally led the main assault wow. through the woods, commanding 30,000 soldiers. Mm. Loudon advanced from the southwest with a mixed infantry cavalry contingent. General O'Donnell circumvented the woods and elevations entirely and approached from the west. The Duke of Arenberg commanded 20,000 infantry approaching from the northeast. By 4 a.m. the Austrians were in position. Loudon was the first to engage in combat with the Prussian irregulars roaming the woods. Fighting broke out as the Prussian artillery opened fire blindly upon hearing the noise of battle. An artillery duel emerged. This continued 
until Ludon's grenadiers crept up behind the southernmost artillery battery and quickly neutralized all soldiers. On the Prussian right flank, officers realized their pickets in the woods had been overrun and an attack was imminent. Panic erupted, a soldier scrambled to take wow. their positions and man the artillery. The Austrian infantry was already entering Hochgear from the south. Then Ludon's cavalry charged into the Prussian lines from the west. Many soldiers were mercilessly slain without even having the chance to put up a fight. A regiment from the center line was the first to respond. Mm -hmm. They swerved south before attacking Ludon's force. Half-dressed grenadiers decided to form a spirited defense, but they were heavily outnumbered. The entire right flank was overrun, with many soldiers retreating to the north. Prussian officers had trouble getting Frederick out of bed. Wow. The king attributed the noise of battle to the usual morning skirmishes with Croatian irregulars. Most of the haphazardly formed defense was coordinated by Zita, Keith, and Seidlitz. Meanwhile, Austrian howitzers opened fire and burned large parts of the village. Finally, Frederick learned the ugly truth of the situation wow. developing when some rounds hit his headquarters. He ordered his army to evacuate. Dispatched a courier to both the 60,000 strong army stationed around four miles to the north into action and sent three regiments under Prince Francis of Brunswick towards Hochgear. Seaton mounted a counterattack against Dawn's main army. I just never understood Frederick the Great's luckiness in a lot of these situations. Because I don't know if most people think of him as a gen uh, military genius or just lucky. That's probably a redundant question, but still. Though holding them back mm. initially, Isuzars would not be able to hold mm. out against the overwhelming force. Within Hochgear, Keith attempted to lead an assault to recapture the heavy artillery. Instead, he was shot through the chest Ooh. before a cannonball knocked him off his horse, killing him instantly. To the northeast, Arenberg launched an attack against a Prussian battalions and battery of 30 cannons. These held out bravely, despite being outnumbered. Upon receiving Frederick's career goading him into action, Retzov dispatched his cavalry to the south. Mm. These ran into O'Donnell's cavalry. It is unsure if they engaged in combat before O'Donnell retreated to Steindorfe. By now, Retzov had moved to link up with Prince Charles. They intended to secure the line of retreat for the main Prussian mm. army. Throughout the fighting, most Prussians concentrated themselves around Hochgear's north, desperately defending against the ever-advancing Austrian. By 6 a.m., Prince Francis arrived. With the remaining infantry, they mounted a counterattack. This counterattack was surprisingly successful, and the enemy mm. was pushed from the village. But the continuous artillery barrage did not make much of a victory, let alone a moment that turned the tide. Instead, canister shot killed many infantry and high-ranking mm. officers. Frederick, commanding a fresh infantry force, reached the village shortly after. They mounted another counterattack, together with Zetan's cavalry. During the attack, a cannonball killed Prince Franz. Wow. An Austrian counterattack from the south, with pro irregulars flanking them from the left, and Lacey's cavalry from the right, proved the finishing blow. Mm -hmm. Frederick called the retreat. It was utter chaos among the Prussian lines. Wow. Retzov established the new Prussian line to Warwitz's north, Slowly, battered Prussian infantry straggled towards him. Some regiments lost over 60% of their strength. Around this time, the infantry fighting Arenberg was surrounded. Most surrendered, and a few managed to retreat to the improvised Prussian front line. All cannons fell to the Austrians. By 10 a.m., the battle was over. The majority of the Prussian army retreated to the northwest. Nearly 10,000 soldiers were left in Hochgear fighting an impossible battle. Despite the incredible chaos and carnage, the retreat <coughs> was orderly, without wow. panic. The Austrians did not launch a pursuit. The assault wow. was catastrophic for the Prussians. The fact the entire army did not retreat in an uncoordinated route mm. says a lot about the Prussian discipline. One of Hochger's streets was known as Blood Alley, mm. where a river of blood poured down the gutters from the massacre Ooh. there. The casualty figures were enormous. Around a third of the Prussian army, over 9,000 men were lost. Mm. Besides that, they lost supplies and tents, heavy guns and provisions. The army also lost the king's brother-in-law, Francis of Brunswick, General Geist, and Field Marshal mm. James Keith. 
Prince Moritz of Anhalt Dessa was severely wounded and would never recover. The Austrians, despite completely surprising the Prussians, lost some 6,000. Dawn has played me a slippery trick today. In truth, I have suffered a great misfortune, but in, it must be put right with determination and courage. The battle shook Frederick and left an imprint on the king, mm. especially the loss of his close friend and confidant, James Keith, was unforgivable. Frederick knew mm. he was solely to blame for the great disaster. His librarian found him in tears, recited- Well, yeah, because he underestimated the Austrians and... And he underestimated how the graveness of the situation until it was too late. So, he is definitely very much to blame. Because of it, because, well, I'm sorry, but because of his arrogance. Thinking, oh, it's just skirmishers, but no, until some... A, sh a shell landed near him, he decided, oh, I must do something. It's just, it, I just can't bring words to describe it, really. Citing Racine's poem, Mitridate. Mm -hmm. Two days after the battle, Frederick learned of the death of his beloved sister, Wilhelmina. Wow. In contrast, Vienna was a place of festivities upon learning of the victory. The victory at Hochkir took place on Maria Theresa's name day. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Hochkir was welcome news at the party, but characteristically, the cautious dawn failed to follow up on the victory. Instead, the Russians retreated to their winter quarters beyond the Vistula River, and he lost the momentum. After a few days of depression, Frederick stepped up his game and began organizing a counter-offensive. News reached him of a Turkish offensive along the Danube, which might actually allow him some breathing room. Mm -hmm. But all this was unnecessary. No more battles would take place this winter. Some sharp skirmishes occurred, but Frederick's movements were enough to unnerve the Austrians. By November okay. 5th, the Austrians abandoned the siege of Neisse as Frederick approached. By late November, Dawn retreated to his winter quarters in Bohemia. Territorial control in Hochkirch's aftermath remained surprisingly unchanged. Frederick retained control over Saxony and Silesia. Wow. Finally, winter came and the warring parties lay dormant. <clears throat> However, the 1759 campaign would see renewed warfare and battles. Thank you so much for watching this video. If there's a topic, person, battle or event you would like to know more about, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, and that'll do it. That's uh, another interesting video. And um, I've already said my thoughts, so... Um, so if you like this reaction, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.